Creating a video which makes sense is a different skill set to shooting stills. With stills you're grabbing a moment, an instant in time, but whereas with a video you are telling a story. So you need to make sure that what you shoot tells that story and can be joined together in a sensible way in the edit. This is called shooting to edit. So in this video we're going to give you some tips on how to shoot those clips so that they can be joined together in a way that makes sense. We're also going to show you how to add voiceover whilst you're filming, where to start speaking, where to stop speaking, how to add handles onto the end so that there's going to be space to edit. I know it all sounds complicated but trust me it really is pretty straightforward. So this is really a beginner's guide. We're only going to be using a mobile, fo mobile phone. Lorna and I popped out into the forest and we have shot a little promo for a workshop in the new forest, a photography workshop in the new forest. So we're going to show you how we shot the clips and then we're going to show you what those clips look like once they've been edited together and I think you'll be surprised. Now this isn't about camera skills, this is about editorial skills. It's also really for our lovely subscribers, many of whom have asked me if I'd come and run a photo workshop where they live, be that in the UK or outside of that and this is really aimed at them because we may need a bit of video footage to help us promote that. But if you just stumbled across this film on YouTube, I think you're going to find there's a huge amount of useful hints and tips going on in here for you as well. So without further ado, let's head into the forest. I think the place to begin is for you to just introduce yourself to everybody. Now I know you may shudder at the thought of doing that, but hey, think about it. If it weren't for you and the kind of work that you're putting in, no one would ever be coming on this workshop. It's you who's making it happen. So one way you could do that, just, just film a little tiny bit of footage of yourself, just saying who you are and why you would like to come to this location. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can either prop the phone up on something and kind of be on this side of it, or you can reverse the camera so you can see yourself in the screen. Now I think that's the easiest way, even though it drops the video resolution. It doesn't matter. This doesn't need to be a professional, slickly put together video, okay? We're gonna worry about that bit at the end. So what would you say as a little intro? Well, you can just sort of say who you are and why you think this is a good location and why you invited me to come and shoot, uh, sorry, not shoot, and uh, put together a workshop in your area. Sorry, I'm muttering because I had my camera all set up, ready to go in advance, and then I lost the settings because I accidentally pressed something. So I've set it up so that I can see on this side what I'm filming. I've chosen just here because the video is gonna be about doing a workshop in the new forest. And let's face it, that looks pretty foresty, doesn't it? This is kind of the new forest. So here we go, I'm gonna film a little bit of an intro of me and I'm gonna frame myself up on the left-hand side a bit. I like the path over my shoulder. I think that's really good. I'm actually possibly gonna hold it that way up. Yes, that looks much nicer. This is the good thing with looking at yourself in the viewfinder. You can see what looks nicer. So I framed it up with a path going down my side. Let's just set that rolling and then you can see. So I framed that with a path going down my side here. It's off going in that direction. And I think that looks quite good. So let's assume for a moment that I am somebody else. Okay, here's my intro. Hi everybody, my name is Simon Smith and I've asked Mike Brown to come and do a workshop in the New Forest because I think it is a fabulous place to do photography. I have lived here most of my life um, and I've been into photography for much of that. So what have we got in the New Forest? Well obviously it's a forest so we've got trees, we've got beautiful scenery. Also the New Forest has lots of heathland and the famous ponies and it drops right down to the sea. So let me show you why I think this is a great place. And then stop the video, okay? You need to give little pauses at the beginning and at the end, and then I've got somewhere to edit to. Don't worry about the editing, that's my job. So there we go, we have done a little introduction as to this place and why, who I am and why I think it's a good spot to come. Little details, little pools of light, they can make some lovely images and they're just moving a little bit in the breeze. So shoot a little 10 second clip of things like that. You may or may not wish to speak over them. I probably will, but you don't have to because I might add some music. What I like here is this little piece of fern. I like the light on this fern here. It's backlit, the light's coming through it and there are other ferns and they're just moving in the breeze. Now it's important to try and keep the camera still so here we go, I'm just going to rest it on my knee and press the record button, make sure it's all lined up and still. And then 
line the shot, there it is. And as the sun comes in low through the trees, you can get some beautiful images as it comes backlighting through the ferns. And then stop the recording. That little pause is really important because it gives us something to edit to. Something to remember is to film, if you're using a phone, with it this way, not that way. Most people hold phones that way, but film with it that way, because that is the shape of a screen in YouTube or most video players and indeed computer monitors. So remember to always shoot with it landscape shape like that. So now I'm in the, I'm down in Rhinefield Drive. Rhinefield is world famous for its redwood trees, which really are pretty spectacular. And at this time of night, the light is actually really lovely. Just kind of looking down through there, you can see how bright it is coming back in through the trees. So I want to give a sense of how these trees go up into the air. So I'm going to do a pan shot. I'm going to start down low like this, just kind of looking through the trees. And then I'm going to change my shot up like this. I'm going to tell the viewers where we are and what we're doing. And you just need to try and keep it as still as possible. Don't panic overly much. This is going to be a bit wobbly. You can, of course, have several goes at this. I'm just doing them kind of as I run. You spend as much time as you like over it. Have fun with it as a project. When you're doing a pan, it's usually best to start at the bottom before we're going to cut into it. So it gives me room to cut when I edit. So I'm going to start on the ground and then pan up like that and then start speaking when I get to the appropriate place and then stop. So starting the recording on the ground like this, I'm now recording, I'm just checking my composition. I like that shadow. And here we go. These are the giant redwood trees in, <laughs> you see, I got it wrong. You're allowed to get things wrong and start again. I get it wrong all the time. You don't see the outtakes in all our videos. I'm going to start again. This is Boulderwood, home to some of the biggest redwood trees in the UK. It's not Boulderwood, it's Rhinefield. Do you see what I mean? It's okay to get it wrong. And again, this is Rhinefield Ornamental Drive, home to some of the largest redwood trees in the whole of the UK. And you can get some lovely shots of them with the light coming through them, particularly late in the evening. And stop. Still in Rhinefield, I want to shoot a static shot. These need to be just allowed to run for about 10 seconds, okay? And I'm gonna use this piece of wood to steady the camera because the steadier the shots are, the better. What I really like is the light coming through these trees. A little tip for you, film from behind a tree when you're going straight into the light because if I stand over here, you can probably see straight away from the light on my face. It's very, very bright here. This stops lens flare on your camera. So I'm gonna get down low. The composition, I want these trees and I want this little bit of dry stream because I like the light coming through the trees. So here we go, I'm just going to hold that still against there. That's cool. And just let it roll for 10 seconds and I'm not going to say anything. You probably heard and can probably see there's a car coming down the road. Now your microphone is going to pick up that noise and it makes it a little bit more tricky to edit. So now the car's gone. I'm just going to do it again. It's exactly the same thing, the same composition. It's all nicely lined up. I like the tree, Let the car go. It's just so that the phone can record the sounds of the forest. Here we go, pressing the button now, holding it still. That's plenty long enough. Luckily we had a dove start off then as well. These boats with the early morning light on them look really, really nice. So I want to get a quick shot of them. Think about foreground, think about using foreground. All the stuff that we've talked about using a still picture, it's just the same with a bit of video. So I'm gonna put these lobster pots in the left corner foreground. We're gonna have some boats over there. So we just line it up. There we go, that's probably about right there. Try and hold it as still as possible. 
press the button, let it roll for a bit and then the New Forest is surrounded by small harbours and ports. This is Limington Marina. This makes sure there are loads and loads and loads of boats. Some of them are on mud flats, some of them are on quays. But there's always plenty of boats and water to photograph. And stop it. If you've already got a few really great photos of a location, then by all means come and do a little video of it. Send me that video clip and send me the photo as well, and then I can edit the two together. So this is Hatchet Pond. It's a really great place for sunsets, pretty much all year round. This time of the year, the sun's gonna set over here. Now, in the winter, it sets pretty much at the other end, down over here. So the shots I want to take, I'm gonna do a pan. I'm gonna do a pan through the lake. Remember the old thing, start the play, start before where you want it to start and then nice and smoothly all the way around. Now when I point my phone at the sun, it's probably going to go into a sunsetty thing because the exposure is going to drop automatically. So what do we do? Fire up the phone. Here we go, get the video camera ready. Make it all nicely lined up and smooth. Now I'm going to start over here where this camper van is and then kind of roll the shot on around across the pond and I'm going to speak a bit as I go. The light is awesome right now. So, no, I'm on still shot at the moment because I've moved it accidentally. Here we go, right, video rolling. So I can get my shot lined up. I'm just going to use my elbows against my body as like a little tripod. Make sure you don't get your fingers over the lens. I just want to check where a third is. That's about there so I know where the horizon's going. And then as smoothly as I can, I'll start my pan. I'm going to start talking when I get into the place where I want the voice to begin, which is going to be out there on the lake, on the pond. Here we go. This is Hatchet's Pond. It's about halfway between Bewley and Lymington, and it is a fabulous place to shoot a sunset. You can get some awesome sunset pictures here pretty much all year round. Then I hold the shot for a few seconds before stopping the video and we got a lovely little sunset shot there. And by chance we got ducks and swans and all that stuff going on. Now I just want to do a couple of slightly close up static shots. So I'm going to come down here to the water. I think I just want to look at the ripples. There's a little piece of wood here which is going to catch the light. So come on down Lorna, you might be able to see it a bit better. So I'm just going to Oh, that's nice. I'm just going to hold the phone against my knee to keep it still. I'm going to put that little piece of wood in the bottom left third and I'm not going to say anything. This is just going to be just a little cutaway of the ripples in the light because they look beautiful. And there we go, there's my little 10 second clip of that. We've got some swans going on here as well. You know, don't miss these things out. They're all stuff that'd be interesting to photograph. So I'm probably going to do another still shot, just like we've been doing already. I'm going to brace my mobile phone down here to keep it nice and still. So that means I'm going to get down on the ground, see if I can look across the lake, across the pond to where the swans are. That's not bad. So I'm going to hold that still, hit the go button, count to 10. and stop. And I'm going to do one more looking straight into the sunset. If you can get a really amazing looking image, by all means, just send me an extra one. It doesn't matter. I can always lose a few, but if I haven't got enough, I can't edit them together. So we've got wildlife into the sun here at the moment. That's nice. I've got my shot lined up, try and make sure the horizons are level. And hit the go button. 10 seconds. There we go. That's that one done. So that's how we go about filming a promo video just using a mobile phone. The principles of using a DSLR or a more expensive video camera are pretty much the same, but we will address that at another time. The most important things are not to wave the camera around all over the place, try and keep the shot steady, don't zoom in and out all the time, 
And I think I've possibly over the point a bit, but 10 second clips are really important so we can take a piece out of the middle and there's a gap at either end to slide it up and down in the timeline. We shot many more clips than that and then brought them all back here to the office, but the technique was pretty much the same. When I put it into the edit suite and take all those disparate bits and pieces and then mix it up with some <clears throat> photos of the locations, it looks like this. Hi everybody, my name is Simon Smith and I've asked Mike Brown to come and do a workshop in the New Forest because I think it is a fabulous place to do photography. I have lived here most of my life um, and I've been into photography for much of that. So what have we got in the New Forest? Well obviously it's a forest so we've got trees, we've got beautiful scenery. Also the New Forest has lots of heathland and the famous ponies and it drops right down to the sea. So let me show you why I think this is a great place. This is Rhinefield Ornamental Drive, home to some of the largest redwood trees in the whole of the UK, and you can get some lovely shots of them with the light coming through them, particularly late in the evening. Evening light, you can get some amazing shots of the pine plantations as they're straight up tree trunks and up towards blue skies. These are the world famous New Forest ponies, which make amazing pictures, particularly if you catch them in the evening at the end of the day. Besides the ponies, the New Forest also has plenty of other wildlife for you to photograph. There are also great views across the lakes and waters. The New Forest is bursting with pretty little views. This is Hatchet's Pond. It's about halfway between Bewley and Lymington, and it is a fabulous place to shoot a sunset. You can get some awesome sunset pictures here pretty much all year round, and it's somewhere we should definitely visit. On a Saturday, Lymington High Street is closed and there's a bustling, busy street market which could be a great opportunity for a bit of street photography. But with Lymington's close proximity to Bournemouth and Southampton, there is always an opportunity to get into town and photograph some people. The New Forest is surrounded by small harbours and ports. This is Lymington Marina. This makes sure there are loads and loads and loads of boats. Some of them are on mud flats, some of them are on quays. But there's always plenty of boats and water to photograph. and where the land meets the sea, there's some amazing coastline. I hope you agree with me that this is a fantastic place to do photography and a wonderful place for a workshop. I look forward to meeting you. I bet you didn't think it would look like that once it had been edited. It's amazing, isn't it? Once things are stitched together in the edit, they can look really, really great, but there has to be enough clips, enough footage, and enough still photos to blend it all together. So when you think about where to go and film, think about places that you have photographed, places you've got some nice images of, and then go and film there, because then we can mix them together into the edit. Something else to consider is noise, wind noise in particular. Devices with built-in microphones are really, really bad at picking up wind noise. Here's me getting it wrong on a breezy day. So what I'm going to do is to just share my thoughts with you. So uh, I thought if I just use my phone. Yeah, it's not much use really, is it? <clears throat> so try and shelter the device from the wind, or better still, try not to film on a windy day if you possibly can. Things to watch for, as I said, is zooming in and out and waving the camera around. Those are also really important, plus the 10 second clips. But I think I've probably over laboured that point already. But it's really important to have a gap on either end so that we can slide the clip up and down and take the piece out that we want. You can get uh, uh, a printed sheet with, with some tips and all this kind of information written down. I'll send that to you if it's something you'd like to do, you, you'd like to make a film, and that would be completely awesome. So. Go and enjoy it, go and have fun. I really look forward to doing some workshops with you out and about in all sorts of exciting places. Just drop me a line through the website to let me know you're interested and we can rock and roll from there.
Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.